This is the new season format Vondel. It's coming to Warzone 2 and DMZ. It's brand new and basically uses completely new assets and is coming with a raft of gameplay changes as well. I also got the chance to take part in a question and answer session last week in Los Angeles at the Infinity Ward studio and I got some pretty interesting information about DMZ and some answers on those pay to win bundles as well. So smash a like on the video if you're excited for season four and let's dig into it. So first up, I got to play the Vondel map on the Resurgence game mode for Warzone and a brand new game mode coming in season four called Lockdown. Now in these two modes, the map is exactly the same and it will be exactly the same in DMZ2. So the footage you're watching right now represents all the game modes that you're going to be able to play in season four on this map. Vondel is made by Beanox, the team who built Rebirth Reinforced for Warzone 1, which I thought was actually a really good rework. But here, they've built something very different to anything we've seen in Warzone before. The map is set in Europe, and it's using Amsterdam as kind of like inspiration, as well as taking cues from the single-player mission in Modern Warfare 2 that you've probably played. There are 15 unique POIs that are spread across this medium-sized map that will support up to 70 players in Resurgence and 18 players in DMZ. That's six squads of three. There's a lot of verticality on the map. There's townhouses that are all stacked up against each other. There's this huge castle area. There's an entire zoo on the map. There's a stadium that features the layout of the speedball map on the pitch. And there's even a police station with a helipad on top. So you might want to go there for your high kill games in Resurgence. There's also the extensive canal network. That's going to bring water combat into play a lot more than we've seen on previous maps. But Beanox has increased the opacity of the water. So you're easily able to see through it unlike you can on Ashika and Almazra, and they've crammed the beds of the canals with loot so that you can find weapons, ammunition, lethals, tacticals, and everything down there underneath the water. They've really tried to make sure that the canals don't become a sore spot for combat in the game mode. And we can't forget about the new dynamic fog system on Vondel, which can increase or decrease the density of the fog throughout matches. Extreme fog events, they are rare in Resurgence, but they can happen. It's going to be more frequent on DMZ infills. But if you look out for the dynamic billboards across the map, that's going to display live weather reports. And you can listen out for an announcement call that will tell you if fog is about to start rolling in. One major gameplay change coming with Season 4 is the increase of base health from 100 to 150. I can hear you cheering in the comments. This is something that was introduced back in the day on Verdansk. It was made to try and increase the time to kill and present a more consistent gunfight experience. That's now returning with Season 4 of Warzone 2. So you'll now have 150 health and 150 armor. That's a total health of 300 HP. Now, I know this is being implemented for Battle Royale and Resurgence, but at the time of the event that I went to in Los Angeles to capture this gameplay, it hadn't been decided by the development team if that health increase was going to be applied to DMZ as well. And right now, I still don't have an answer on that, so we're just going to have to wait until the patch notes drop tomorrow to find out. And then there's the lockdown game mode. This felt a lot more casual, quite a relaxed mode for the new map. Essentially, it's like hard point, but just larger. You spawn flying down onto the map with your loadout and your team has to capture the hard points across the area. If you stay on the hard point, it adds one point per second to your team's score. And after two minutes, the hard points move and that process starts again. The team that hits the point cap first wins. And it was kind of described as a great game mode to just relax and play. If you want to grind some guns, you're going to get lots of kills here because you're going to be dropping on hard points and they're like honey pots for people just camping at buildings and stuff like that so a great way to just experience the new map when it launches and to grind out some guns if you haven't done that already but now all of that high level information is out of the way i think we're going to talk about some of the dmz information that i collected at this event it was a short q a session at the end of the event where there were plenty of questions asked by content creators about the map the different game modes and various other things so i thought i'd bring that information to you I have been told by the developers that all changes happening for Season 4 will be included in the patch notes that drop tomorrow as the update goes live. So these Q&A details are going to give you further insight into what the team is thinking about DMZ at the moment. And there is a little bit of information in here about other game modes as well, if you play Battle Royale and stuff like that. First of all, there was a bit of a discussion about assimilation in DMZ. I'm sure you're all aware of the kind of meta shift that we've seen in DMZ in recent weeks where players who use assimilation are using it as it's intended to be used, but then there are some people that are well, not using it in the right way. 
they are exploiting the matchmaking system to create pre-made six-man teams. They just meet up on the map as two groups of three right after they infill, assimilate together, but they're all friends. They all have the idea that they were going to assimilate as soon as they started. They're exploiting the system. Now, Infinity Ward said that assimilation is really liked by them as a development team, as a feature in DMZ, because it allows players to have experiences that are unlike other game modes in the game. It was a new way to play and so on and so on. But they also said that they are paying attention to players, quote, getting rolled immediately, end quote. They didn't expand on that. Another question was taken very quickly afterwards, but I suppose the developers being aware of perhaps the greatest issue that DMZ has right now is a good thing. I would have liked a bit more information, perhaps something towards how they plan to combat the issue. But as I say, they just moved on to another question. The point was raised that despite Vondal being larger than Ashika Island, DMZ is going to be supporting a much lower player count than we all expected, just 18 players. Now at the capture session, we got to play a few rounds of Resurgence and Lockdown, neither of which featured the AI faction that DMZ has across each of its exclusion zones. That wasn't something that I really thought about until somebody asked the question about player numbers, but Infinity Ward said that they feel that 18 players, 6 squads of 3, across the map worked well in their testing, and that adding the AI on top of that does make the map feel a lot more crowded in DMZ. Now, of course, I didn't get to play DMZ at the event, so for now, we'll have to wait until we get proper hands-on on June 14th when the update goes live to really get a feel for how the game is going to play compared to Ashika Island and Almazra. Something that could have a huge effect on gameplay for Season 4 is Vondal's canal system and the presence of much more water on the map than we've seen so far. A question that was brought up by another creator, mainly they play Battle Royale, asked whether the team was going to introduce shooting mechanics underwater for other weapon categories, so things like assault rifles, LMGs, SMGs, and things like that. The answer was no. Right now, there aren't any plans to expand any further, so pistols will be your weapon to use underwater on Vondel. Now, considering how often when playing Battle Royale, you're likely to be moving through these canals, swimming through them, I can see having to give up a weapon slot to a pistol is going to be a bit jarring when it comes to gameplay for Battle Royale and Resurgence, but for DMZ, it might not be such a big deal due to the backpack system and being able to carry a third weapon in your medium or large bag. A few of the Battle Royale creators in the room for that Q&A did seem concerned that there hadn't been any changes to introduce other weapon categories to use underwater, and I can understand why the pacing of Battle Royale and Resurgence is far quicker than DMZ, so being able to shoot with your main weapon underwater might be something that you'd want. But as someone like me who's more interested in DMZ, I'm not sure it's going to be a major issue. It will change gameplay, and I can see some scraps happening underwater in the canals when you come across enemy players, but by having that third slot in your bag, you may well have equipped a pistol into it so you can take on that fight anyway. Either that, or you have to find a way to get out of the river so you can pull out your assault rifle. And then lastly, I took the opportunity to ask one of the Infinity Ward team about the recent pay-to-win bundles that were added to the store during Season 3. Whether you want to call them pay-to-win, pay-to-accelerate, pay-to-catch-up, whatever you want to call them, it doesn't matter. I asked about them. This is the response I got. I'm just going to tell you, and then I'll give my opinion on it, and then you can make up your own mind about what was said. The Infinity War team said that because DMZ is fostering a relatively new player base for Call of Duty, lots of people playing it haven't played Call of Duty before, and lots of people haven't played an extraction shooter before, and because the game mode is in beta, they're trying things out. They said the DMZ bundles themselves are aimed at newer players entering the game mode for the first time to give them a leg up against more established players who've been playing from the beginning. The team described DMZ as a very dense game mode that can take a fair bit of time and understanding to get into, so the bundles are essentially a shortcut to help new players against those more experienced players who've already spent months playing, they know the best loot spots, they have a far greater understanding of the items they need, and who are likely to have strong loadouts that they can bring into each match anyway. The team also mentioned that the bundles had cool cosmetics in them, and that drove a lot of people to purchase them. They carried on to say that while they're always trying new things with DMZ, they mentioned the new FOB forward operating base as an example, that they're excited with what's happening with DMZ right now, and that there is more cool stuff coming in the pipeline. Okay, so that is quite a lot to digest, I do understand that, but what I took from that conversation that I had with the IW team was they introduced the bundles to help new DMZ players and give them a leg up, and to sell cool cosmetics. 
those bundles had some very appealing operator skins in them. We had Classic Ghost. I think there was two Classic Ghost skins in that one. And there was the Modern Warfare 2019 Rose skin with the, the green helmet, I think. I would have instantly purchased those were it not for the DMZ power features they added into those bundles too. I think it'd be quite easy to measure which of the two variables, either the DMZ upgrades or the cool skins, were the driver of the bundle purchases for some players. The DMZ upgrades only work in DMZ, so if someone using the Operator skin only ever played Battle Royale, obviously you'd know they'd bought the bundle so that they could use the skins in Battle Royale. They have no pay-to-win effects in that game mode. But what happens when someone who plays DMZ buys the bundles and then uses the Operator skins all the time? Are they doing that for the cool cosmetics or are they doing that for the DMZ upgrades? That's going to be difficult to pinpoint and personally I think that's the slippery slope right there. Also the bundles may well be aimed at new players as a leg up mechanism against more established players but the more established players can also buy the bundles and get access to the DMZ power features like spawning in with a UAV every single round. So whilst I appreciate the response I got, I don't actually think it properly addressed the concerns with the bundles. I am hopeful that no more bundles like these will end up in the game, but there wasn't any confirmation that that would be the case. So take from that answer what you will. I had the opportunity to ask the question directly and I did get a response, but it's kind of really up to you to make up your own mind there. Okay, that's pretty much everything I've got for DMZ Season 4 and the new Vondel map. Tomorrow I'll be live streaming it, so make sure you check that out once it launches, and there'll be more content coming over the next few weeks as always. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you soon.